In lesson 4.7, you will solve quadratic equations by completing the square. In this example, we're going to solve x squared plus 6x minus 8 equals 0 by completing the square. We've already solved quadratic equations by factoring and using the zero product property and also by taking square roots. And in this lesson, we're going to learn yet another method for solving a quadratic equation completing the square. So first step <clears throat> is to make sure that that a value is equal to 1. And in this equation, our a value is equal to 1. So we can move on to the next step, which is to move c to the other side of the equal sign. So our c value in this equation is negative 8. And if I add 8 to both sides of the equation, I'm going to have 8 on the right. Now I left a square so that I can complete the square on my x terms. To do that, I want to take my b value, which is 6. I want to divide it by 2 and square it. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. Now I want to take that 9 and add it to both sides of the equation. And by doing that, I create a perfect square trinomial on the left that will factor now into a binomial squared. And to factor that uh, trinomial, I take the square root of the first term, which is x. I take the sine of the middle term, which is positive, And I take the square root of the third term, which is 3. So x plus 3 times itself is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. On the right-hand side, I want to simplify, so I get 8 plus 9, which is 17. Okay, <clears throat> now we're ready to undo the power. So we take the square root of both sides. And the square root of a binomial squared is just one binomial, x plus 3. But that's going to equal two solutions, plus or minus the square root of 17. And there's no perfect square factor in 17, so that radical's not going to simplify. Now, now I need to get x completely alone by subtracting 3 from both sides. So my solutions to this quadratic equation are x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 17. And again, I can separate those solutions. 1 is negative 3 minus the square root of 17. And the other one is negative 3 plus the square root of 17. Two irrational real solutions. Okay, in this next example, we're going to solve 5x squared minus 10x plus 30 equals 0, again by completing the square. And the steps for completing the square are listed here on the left. We'll run through them again. <clears throat> now this time, my a value is not 1. So in my first step, I need to make sure that a is equal to 1. So I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 5 which means I'm going to divide every term by 5, because I'll have to distribute on the left. So the first term becomes x squared, and the second term becomes negative 2x. The third term is 6, and 0 divided by 5 on the right is 0. Okay, now that a is equal to 1, we're ready to move c to the other side. And again, I'm going to leave a space to complete the square on x. I'm going to have negative 6 on the right. Okay, now I take that b value, negative 2. I divide it by 2 and square it. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. So I add 1 to both sides of this equation. So now I have this perfect square trinomial on the left that's going to factor into a binomial squared. And I take the square root of x squared first, 
I take the sine of the middle term negative, and I take the square root of the third term, so the square root of one is one. X minus one times itself is equal to x squared minus two x plus one. On the right hand side when I add I get negative five. So now I'm ready to undo the power and take the square root of both sides. Okay, the square root of my binomial squared is just one binomial, x minus one. It's equal to two solutions, plus or minus, <clears throat> the square root of negative five. Now remember, this is an imaginary uh, number, so I wanna take the square root of negative one, which is i, and I'll have to leave the square root of five underneath the radical. Okay, and now I wanna move that one to the other side to get x completely alone. So I have x is equal to one plus or minus i square roots of five. So this quadratic equation has two imaginary solutions, and I'm gonna separate them again. One minus i square roots of five, and one plus i square roots of five. to imaginary solutions. Okay, here we want to find the value of x, and we know the area of this rectangle is 50, so we want to write an equation where we're going to multiply length times width to get that area for this rectangle, 50. Okay, now we're going to want to distribute on the left and get rid of parentheses, so we're going to get x squared plus 10x and because we're completing the square, I'm gonna leave that 50 on the right-hand side. That's my C value. And <clears throat> my A value is one, so I'm ready to take my B value, which is 10, divide it by two and square it. So that's gonna be five squared, which is 25. And I add 25 to both sides of this equation. Now I have that perfect square trinomial on the left, so I'll factor it into a binomial squared. Square root of the first term, sine of the middle term, square root of the third term. x plus five times itself is x squared plus 10x plus 25. On the right hand side when I add, I get 75. Okay, now I'm ready to undo the power. So I take the square root of both sides so the square root of that binomial squared is just one binomial, x plus five. It's equal to two solutions, plus or minus, the square root of 75. Now the perfect square factor in 75 is 25. We can write 75 as 25 times three. So I wanna take the square root of 25, which is five, and I'm left with the square root of three. Okay, now I'll move that five to the other side, the equal sign so that x is equal to negative five plus or minus five square roots of three. Okay, now there's two solutions here, negative five minus five square roots of three and negative five plus five square roots of three. Now for this application problem, we're talking about x being the width of a, a rectangle, and we know that that width can't be negative. Negative five minus five square roots of three is gonna be a negative value, so we'll have to throw that solution out. And negative five plus five square roots of three, since five square roots of three is gonna be larger than negative five, we will get a positive value here for x. So this is the solution that we're looking for. Okay, now we're gonna write the quadratic equation in vertex form, y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, and then identify the vertex. So we're gonna take these quadratic equations and put them in vertex form so that we can pick out that vertex. Remember, it's h, k. 
Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to complete the square on x again in order to factor uh, a trinomial into a binomial squared, which is part of our vertex form. So I'm going to move that 16 to the side. I need to make sure that a is equal to 1, and it is. And now I'm going to take my b value to complete the square on x. I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. So I'm getting 3 squared, which is 9. So now on this right-hand side of the equation, I'm going to have to add 9 and subtract 9 so that I'm not changing the value of the right-hand side. All I really added was 0. But that'll allow me to factor that perfect square trinomial into a binomial squared, taking the square root of the first term, the sine of the middle term, and the square root of the third term, which is 3. Okay, then I'll add 16 and negative 9 and get positive 7. So there our equation is in vertex form, and we can pick out that vertex, hk. So h is negative 3, and k is positive 7. So the vertex for this parabola is negative 3, 7. Let's try it again. Only in this equation, our a value is not 1, so I'm going to factor negative 2 out of my x terms. That's going to leave x squared minus x. I'm going to leave a space to complete the square, so I'm going to move that negative 7 over. Okay, I'll just check. Negative 2 times x squared is negative 2x squared, and negative 2 times, oh, well, want to make that positive x. So negative 2 times positive x is negative 2x. Okay, good thing we checked. And now I'm ready to complete the square, so I'm going to take my b value, which is 1. I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. So I have 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. And I'm going to add 1 fourth inside parentheses, but that's really negative 2 times 1 fourth, or negative 1 half. So I want to add 1 half to negative 7 in order to make sure that all I've done was add 0 to this right hand side. Okay, now I'm ready to factor. So that trinomial will factor into a binomial squared, square root of the first term, sine of the middle term, and the square root of the third term. x plus 1 half times itself is equal to x squared plus x plus 1 fourth. And when I add negative 7 to positive 1 half, negative 7 is negative 14 halves, so I'm going to get negative 13 halves. Okay, and now this is vertex form, so I'm ready to pick out that vertex. My h value is negative 1 half. Remember, h is what's ever subtracted from x. And my k value is negative 13 halves. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 7, 9, 13, and 15 found on pages uh, 286 and 287 of your textbook.